MLB The Show is back for a second season on the Nintendo Switch. While the first iteration of the game was quite fun to play, the production was riddled with a lot of visual issues that were hard to overlook. Now, are these absent from the show 23? And most importantly, is the game worth a look? Especially if you didn't bite on the 2022 version of the game. Let's get into it. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We've got tons of coverage of sports games, Japanese exclusive games, all sorts of different stuff about the Switch. We also do a bi-weekly podcast called the Famicast. Today, though, we're taking a deep dive into MLB The Show 23 on the Nintendo Switch in this review. Controls in the show 23 on the Switch remain tight and responsive. Now, as with the game on any platform, you're able to tweak the gameplay to your liking. For me, the initial setting for hitting, basically just making things work with the press of the button, that was completely fine. I did turn off the throwing accuracy meter for fielding, as I did kind of find that to be a little bit finicky. Uh, for pitching, I stuck with the meter style here. Uh, with this, you just choose your pitch uh, location, and then basically you time the pitching meter for power and then accuracy. I did play around a little bit with the the uh, pinpoint pitching during the tech test back in February, but I really didn't like that at all. Um, yeah, as I mentioned previously, there really are quite of options to choose from when it comes to controls. I'm personally not trying to impress anybody with like my super gaming skills or anything like that because they're not there. I don't think you should either. Set up the game in a way that gives you optim optimal enjoyment because that's all that really matters. I mean, I think what's on offer here is really great though, uh, but yeah, just fiddle around with stuff to your liking. Pretty much everything from the previous 2022 edition of the game is here. I mean, you got Diamond Dynasty, March to October, Franchise Mode, Road to the Show, but you also have storylines, more on that in a bit. Uh, you also have the Retro Mode and, you know, a couple of other things too that have always been around. Now, one nice update here comes to Franchise Mode. In the show 23, you can play a more streamlined version, only playing basically key moments from the season as opposed to every single game, stuff like that. I think that's pretty nice to hear for those of us with maybe more responsibility and less times on our hand, less time on our hands, so that's nice. And of course, the ability to team up with uh, others on any console online is back with crossplay. Again, more on that in a bit. As is the ability to, con to continue your game on another platform with cross progression. So that's great. The show has teamed up with the World Baseball Classic to offer several moments and player cards and team packs. Now, the moments take a handful of scenarios from the WBC and allow you to recreate some historic moments from the tournament. Uh, the uniforms and players are all well done here. I think they look great, and I think the mode's fun. It's cool to play these moments. It's a little tough, but it's still fun. It's great to see it represented here, too, though I did find myself a little bit underwhelmed. There's no option to set up your own tournament using teams or anything like that, which would have been nice. Also, the content's only available until December 31st, 2023, so if this is something that you want to experience, you'll have to dive in before that date. Now, Road to the Show is a mode that I'm partial to, so I took it for a spin here, too. Uh, this time around, I set myself to be drafted by the New York Mets as a third baseman. Basically, yeah, so it's, you know the drill here. Uh, starting out for the AA team, the AA team, the Rumble Ponies. I'm currently working my way up through, uh, through the league, trying to get all the way up to the majors and stuff like that. Now the third baseman, Yay. Danny his dudeness. Now, as with these kind of modes, progress is a little bit slow, but I'm enjoying it so far. I think the only downside here is that there's really not that much different from last year's version. Um, one thing they did actually, they did have here as well, there's an option for a face scan, uh, but for some reason it wasn't working at all for me when I was trying this out during the early access period of the game. As a result, I'm stuck with an even uglier version of myself. <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, this mode's still fun, but it's largely the same as what it was last year. Storylines is the newest addition to the show series and the show 23. San Diego Studios has teamed up with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum to bring a series of some mostly unknown men and their stories to a new audience. Season one offers a look at eight players with several episodes in each. Now these consist of relatively short video intros narrated by Bob Kendrick and then a gameplay mission to play. This mode's actually really cool. As a base, as a fan of baseball and history, it's awesome to see San Diego Studios team up to bring these stories to an audience of baseball fans through a video game. Uh, the production values here uh, for the videos are great. Uh, the elements introduced in the gameplay are also pretty cool too, pretty believable. You'll see old school uniforms and in incredible detail, uh, smaller stadiums that seem pretty accurate to the era. And then the crowd too is also filled with fans wearing era appropriate clothing. You know, it's like 
from set in like the 1940s and 50s, so you'll see people wearing like suits and ties or something like that. I mean, yeah, simply put, this mode ab absolutely nails it in all these respects. I'm really looking forward to see what they can do with season two of next year. Yeah, and I mean, outside of Jackie Robinson, I didn't know any of these guys. So it's super cool to get this in-depth look at uh, some of these men that changed the face of baseball. Now, I've said this across a number of reviews before. I'm typically not into online competitive play, you know, especially when it comes to a game like the show, games like these that are so rich with single-player content. I mean, still, I did go and take the show 23 uh, for a spin online. Uh, while I think the game can look a little bit choppy at times, the gameplay was still super smooth. And I didn't run into any connection issues or anything like that, even in the crappiest part of my house with the weakest signal and all that type of stuff. Uh, Co-op play is also an option here as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to try that out. But still, I think based on my time with the game online, the Switch version provides a serviceable experience. As with many sports titles on the Nintendo Switch, you likely aren't going to be blown away visually. Even with that said, the Show 23 does appear to look a little bit better than the 2022 iteration of the game. I think the lighting here is pretty nice, character models look sharp, and the ballparks are pretty well done. However, smaller details like signage in the park or on uniforms can be a little bit of a lower resolution. The latter is really noticeable in up-close shots, though you won't really notice it if the game's moving at a quick pace or if you're looking at things from a distance. Performance still suffers from the same issues that were found in the game last year. The Show 23 doesn't have a locked frame rate, which in turn puts the game all over the place, depending on a variety of scenarios and situations. Now, when less of the stadium is on the screen, the game does appear to run a little bit smoother. Now, conversely, when a number of players are on the screen at the same time, or there's just a lot going on, for instance, during celebrations after the game or something, things really start to chug. Thankfully, this doesn't happen when you're in control of the on-field action, at least not in any way that impacts the gameplay from what I've experienced. Now, while playing in handheld mode, the game can be a little bit on the choppy side as well. I can't 100% confirm this from a technical standpoint or anything. I really don't have the tools to do that, but it seems to run worse there than when playing on the TV. Again, this is limited to elements outside of the gameplay, basically cutscenes. So if you're looking for a smoother experience or visual fidelity, you'll definitely be better off playing the show on Xbox or PlayStation. Sound and presentation are on point here as well. Commentary is provided by John Boog Shambi and Chris Singleton, just as they did last year. Now, while I do think the pair do a great job, if you played the show 22, you're going to be hearing a lot of the same comments and lines that were in that game. I think it's still good, but it might feel a bit repetitive if you played a lot of the game from last year. Uh, you know, other things I noticed here too, I think you will, maybe just from the footage here, uh, broadcast elements do look nice, but often suffer from very, very noticeable slowdown. It's not a game breaker, but it's just a little bit disappointing. It'll be the show 23 is another solid entry into the series, albeit with some visual issues that the team hasn't been able to address. The frame rate can be inconsistent, however, it does not affect the gameplay, the most important element of the game. Now, in terms of modes, the addition of the storylines highlighting the Negro Leagues from yesteryear was absolutely awesome, as it can spread awareness to a new audience about a topic that isn't really discussed so much in the mainstream. The minor updates to things like streamlining franchise mode is also welcome. I know I sound a bit down on the game, but actually, I like the Switch version quite a bit. Now, at its core, the Show 23 is a great baseball game. But to be honest, outside of storylines, there's not a whole lot different from the previous year. If you're a casual fan and picked up the game last year, I would suggest really asking yourself if any of these improvements, mainly storylines, is worth it to you. Now, if you skipped out on the game at all completely last year, you should absolutely pick this thing up if you're a baseball fan. Or at the very least, consider picking up the show 22 on the cheap. But let's turn things over to you. Are you planning on picking up the show 23 on the Switch? Are you going to be making use of the cross-progression feature? Now, I personally picked up an Xbox Series S last October and plan on making use of it. But for you guys, be sure to sign off in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this one a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, all that type of stuff. We've got looks at sports games, tons of reviews, podcasts, and a whole lot more. Now, again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Got it! Foster gets the strikeout with that legendary beat.